Like everything else in Wolf Quest 3, the maps are going to be bigger and better than ever before. They'll be 7 by 7 kilometers, so that's 49 square kilometers, more than 10 times bigger than the maps in previous versions of the game. Um, so let's take a look at how we're doing with uh, the Amethyst Mountain map. In a video last year, I showed how we use topographic data and satellite images to create the basic map for Amethyst. Um, but this uh, satellite image is from the summertime, the game starts in the fall. And it's low resolution. When you get down close to it, it's very blurry. So we need to create a new set of textures um, that's high resolution, sharp, and uh, use some special shading techniques to make it look really great. So to do this, we use uh, we start with a satellite photo here, and then we create a bunch of um, control maps that will control where the vegetation goes. So here's one showing um, sage and grass over a large part of the area, obviously. Um, here shows cliffs, so this is where rock textures will go in the cliff areas. These show where the forests go, the Douglas fir forests and the mixed pine forests at higher elevations, so we've got these split out into a number of different control maps uh, for different kinds of forest mix. The river, of course, will be gravel with some dirt. So we use these um, with a tool called a Terrain Composer to create all these layers um, that control how uh, the textures are painted onto the terrain. And then we end up with something um, basically like this. Here's the Lamar Valley. So here's just a, this is a one meter cube we use just for visual reference for scale. So this is basically using the, the basic terrain shader that comes with Unity, the game development engine we use. Um, so here you can see some grass, some dirt, some different, you know, greener grass, browner grass. So the first step is to apply the micro splat shader, um, which we can do real easily here. All right, so now suddenly, look at those textures. They just look much better, don't they? Um, and the reason for that is they have some new features. A normal map, which gives it um, that bumpiness. It looks three-dimensional, right? The rocks stick up some, and that's because the normal map reflects the light. Um, in different ways based on how the, the light rays hit the object and then reflect back into your eyes. So that's just the basic thing you get with, um, with normal maps, but this, has a, this shader has a lot of other cool stuff too. So one of the best uh, basic ones is called height blending. I'll activate that. Um, it takes a minute to load. And now, instead of just blurring from one texture to another, it's based on the height. So um, if you zoom in here, you can see these little bits of grass stick up. They're a little taller. The rocks don't just blur, but you can see like these, some of these rocks are from this texture. Here's at the top of the ridge looking at the cliffs. So we've got some rocks, some little, grab, some little uh, dirt and pine areas. So one of the big problems with the way, with way these terrains work is that you get these tiling patterns, see? Uh, because these textures are repeated, um, and sometimes they're broken up by other textures, but sometimes you just have a long stretch of, uh, of grass. You can see the, the, the squares, the, the grid pattern of it, um, and it also just looks really flat from a distance. You know, if you get close, you get the nice height blending and, and uh, normal mapping to give it some three-dimensionality, but if you back way off, it just looks kind of flat. So if we enable these um, anti-tiling features, then we get some distance, you know, kind of roughs up the terrain. It just gives it a little bit of a, a variation. Um, it does this in a couple ways by throwing another normal map in. It gives it some extra bumpiness on a large scale. It shifts the tiling um, of some of the textures so they don't just fall into that, that rectilinear grid. Um, and then as we get closer, even there's some variation here. You can see this kind of shadowing here. So it just adds this, um, these extra patterns that break up the very simple pattern of the textures themselves. So this shader, Microsplat, um, comes with some other really um, cool features. So one of them is uh, when it rains, uh, things will get wet. This tends to happen. So they get kind of wet and glossy and shiny. So we'll have that working uh, when it rains, the rocks especially, but even the, even the dirt and stuff will get a little darker, a little wetter. Um, that's a real nice effect. 
Another one that I showed um, in the Happy Holidays video, um, you can have snow accumulate. Um, and then you can have it melt. Um, so, well, Yellowstone definitely gets snowstorms in the fall. So we will have some blizzards there, some snow and blizzards that will accumulate snow and then you get a nice sunny warm day and it'll melt. So this is just the terrain, right? There's no grass, there's no bushes. That's all coming uh, soon. We've got a terrific uh, vegetation artist who's got some sagebrush, some fescue grass, and is gonna be working on new trees and other grasses. So we'll be, so we'll be adding those to the terrain soon. But just as a little preview, um, it doesn't look uh, quite this barren. It's not Death Valley. So let me just turn on the, uh, the trees we have. These are some old trees that we were from the, the current game. Um, but we can turn those on. There we go. So we can zoom into a spot that's not too dense, even without the grasses and the other vegetation on the ground. Um, the terrain looks pretty good with these trees, I think. Mm -hmm. 